If you're taking creatine and wondering why nothing seems to be happening, you're not alone, and this might be the most important thing you hear today. Creatine is one of the most effective supplements ever studied, but here's the catch. It only works if you use it correctly, and unfortunately, most people don't. They follow random advice from the internet, copy what someone else is doing, or assume more is always better. The result? Weeks or even months of wasted effort, stalled progress, and the false belief that creatine doesn't work for them. The truth is, creatine isn't magic. It's science. When used properly, it can boost strength, increase energy, improve recovery, and even support brain health. But when used the wrong way, those benefits get watered down or disappear completely. Small mistakes add up fast, and most people don't even realize they're making them. Today, we're breaking down the seven huge mistakes that silently ruin your results when taking creatine. These aren't rare mistakes either. They're incredibly common. And trust me, number five is the one almost everyone gets wrong without knowing it. If you want to finally get the full benefits you're paying for, stick with me. But before we begin, drop your name and the city you're watching from in the comments below. All right, let's get into it. Mistake number one, thinking creatine works overnight. This is one of the most common misunderstandings about creatine, and it trips up a lot of people right at the start. Creatine isn't like caffeine or a pre-workout that hits you within minutes. You don't take one scoop and suddenly feel stronger, faster, or more energized the same day. Creatine works differently, and that's actually why it's so effective. Creatine builds up inside your muscle cells over time. Think of it like filling a gas tank. One small pour doesn't do much, but consistent filling day after day eventually gets the tank full. For most people, this saturation process takes anywhere from one to three weeks of daily use. Once your muscles are fully saturated, that's when strength, endurance, and recovery really start to improve. The mistake happens when people take creatine for three or four days, feel nothing dramatic, and assume it doesn't work. So they stop. In reality, they quit right before the benefits were about to show up. It's like planting seeds and giving up before anything breaks through the soil. During the first week, the changes are subtle. You might feel slightly more energized, or notice workouts feel a bit smoother, but nothing extreme. The real improvements come with consistency. Stick with it daily, even on rest days, and let creatine do its job quietly in the background. If you want results from creatine, patience is part of the process. Give it time, stay consistent, and trust the science, because once it kicks in, you'll absolutely feel the difference. Mistake number two, obsessing over loading phases. One of the most common creatine mistakes starts with a simple belief, that you have to do a loading phase for creatine to work. You've probably heard the advice before, take 20 grams a day for five to seven days, then drop down to a maintenance dose. While this method can work, it's not mandatory, and for many people, it actually causes more problems than benefits. Here's the truth, most supplement labels don't emphasize. A loading phase doesn't make creatine better. It just makes it faster. Loading fills your muscle creatine stores more quickly, but taking a steady dose of 3 to 5 grams per day will still fully saturate your muscles over time. The end result is the same. The only difference is patience. For a lot of people, loading comes with unpleasant side effects. Bloating, stomach cramps, nausea, and digestive discomfort are extremely common when taking high doses all at once. That discomfort often leads people to quit creatine entirely, thinking it doesn't agree with them, when the real issue was simply taking too much, too fast. Consistency matters far more than speed. Creatine works best when it's treated like a daily habit, not a short-term rush. A small, reliable dose taken every day allows your body to absorb it comfortably and steadily without stressing your digestive system. If you're in no rush, and most people aren't, skipping the loading phase is often the smarter move. Stay consistent, give your body time, and let creatine do its job naturally. Slow progress that actually sticks will always beat rushing and quitting halfway through. Mistake number three, buying fancy versions instead of monohydrate. 
Here's a mistake that drains your wallet more than it boosts your results, buying fancy versions instead of simple creatine monohydrate. Walk into any supplement store and you'll see shelves packed with creatine, HCL, buffered creatine, liquid creatine, and advanced formulas promising faster absorption and zero bloating. It sounds impressive, but the science doesn't back most of it up. Over 90% of all creatine research is done on plain creatine monohydrate. It's the form proven again and again to increase strength, power, muscle endurance, and even recovery. It's stable, effective, and well tolerated for the vast majority of people. Yet many people skip it because they think basic means inferior. In reality, basic is exactly what works. Those upgraded versions often come with two problems. First, they're significantly more expensive, sometimes costing double or triple the price. Second, they don't consistently deliver better results. Some liquid creatines even break down before your body can properly use them. Others rely on marketing buzzwords instead of solid evidence. If you've ever felt like creatine didn't work for you, it might not be the supplement itself. It might be the version you chose. Creatine monohydrate, taken consistently at 3 to 5 grams per day, does exactly what creatine is supposed to do. No hype, no gimmicks, just results over time. The takeaway is simple. Stop chasing flashy labels. The cheapest, most boring looking tub on the shelf is usually the best choice. When it comes to creatine, proven beats fancy every single time. Mistake number four, panicking about weight gain. This one scares a lot of people, especially in the first couple of weeks. You start taking creatine, step on the scale, and suddenly it's up one or two kilos. Instantly people think, great, I'm getting fat. But here's the truth, that weight is not fat. It's water being pulled into your muscle cells, and that's exactly how creatine works. Creatine increases the amount of water stored inside your muscles, making them look fuller, stronger, and more energized. This hydration is a good thing. Hydrated muscles can produce more force, recover faster, and handle more training volume over time. The problem is when people let the scale mess with their head. They stop taking creatine or slash calories, even though their body is actually improving. Instead of obsessing over the number on the scale, pay attention to how your clothes fit, how strong you feel in the gym, and how your body looks in the mirror. Many people notice their muscles look tighter and more defined even if the scale goes up slightly. That's progress, not failure. Remember, fat gain doesn't happen overnight, and creatine doesn't magically turn into fat. It simply helps your muscles store energy and water where it matters most. So, if the scale jumps a bit, don't panic. Trust the process, stay consistent, and focus on performance and body composition, not just a single number staring back at you. Mistake number five, not drinking enough water. This one quietly ruins results for more people than anything else, and most don't even realize it. Creatine pulls water into your muscle cells. That's part of how it works. More water inside the muscle means better strength, better endurance, and better recovery. But if you're not drinking enough water to support that process, things start to feel off. People then blame creatine for headaches, bloating, cramps, or feeling sluggish. But here's the truth. Creatine isn't dehydrating you. When creatine shifts water into your muscles, the rest of your body still needs adequate fluid. If you don't replace it, you're running on empty. This is especially important if you train hard sweat a lot, drink coffee, or live in a hot climate. All of those increase fluid loss. Add creatine on top of that without increasing water intake, and you're basically setting yourself up to feel worse instead of better. The fix is simple, but most people skip it. When you start creatine, you should also increase your water intake. You don't need to go crazy, but aim to drink consistently throughout the day, not just during workouts. Clear or light-colored urine is a good sign you're doing it right. Once hydration is dialed in, most of those so-called creatine side effects magically disappear. Energy improves, pumps feel better, digestion settles down, and performance goes up. Creatine works best 
in a well-hydrated body, not a dry one. So if creatine ever made you feel weird, uncomfortable or bloated, don't quit right away. First, look at your water intake. Fix that, and you might finally see the results creatine is actually known for. Mistake number six, overthinking timing. A lot of people get stuck asking, when is the best time to take creatine, morning or night, before or after a workout, with carbs, on rest days, and while they're busy overthinking it, they forget to take it at all. Here's the simple truth. Creatine isn't picky. It doesn't work like a stimulant that gives you an instant boost. Creatine works by building up in your muscles over time. Once your muscles are saturated, they stay that way as long as you keep taking it consistently. That means the exact timing matters way less than most people think. You can take creatine in the morning with breakfast, after your workout with a shake, or at night before bed. Some people like taking it post-workout because it fits their routine. Others take it on rest days with lunch so they don't forget. All of those options work just fine. What doesn't work is skipping days because you're waiting for the perfect moment. Missing doses slows down muscle saturation and can make it feel like creatine isn't doing anything for you. Consistency always beats precision here. The best time to take creatine is the time you'll actually remember every single day. Pair it with a habit you already do, brushing your teeth, eating a meal, or making your protein shake. That simple strategy will give you better results than any fancy timing trick. Stop stressing about the clock. Take your creatine daily, stay consistent, and let it do what it's proven to do over time. Mistake number seven, thinking creatine is only for bodybuilders. Here's the bigger picture most people miss when they talk about creatine. This supplement isn't just about bigger muscles or lifting heavier weights, it's about supporting the parts of your body that naturally decline as you get older. Strength, daily energy, mental clarity, and recovery all tend to drop with age, and creatine directly supports every one of those areas. It helps your muscles produce energy more efficiently, which means everyday movements feel easier and less draining. It supports recovery so your body can bounce back faster from workouts, long days, or poor sleep. And it even plays a role in brain function, helping with focus, memory, and mental sharpness. That's why creatine has started to shift from a gym supplement to a healthy aging supplement. Researchers and health experts now recognize that creatine supports how the body functions at a cellular level, not just how it looks on the outside. And that's an important distinction. This isn't some miracle anti-aging pill promising unrealistic results. Creatine doesn't stop aging, but it helps your body adapt to it better. It gives your muscles, brain, and nervous system extra support as they work a little harder each year. Think of it as maintenance, not magic. When used consistently and responsibly, creatine becomes a simple, affordable way to protect your strength, independence, and quality of life as you age. No hype, no shortcuts, just smart support for a body that's changing and still deserves to feel strong, capable, and energized every day. And there you have it, seven huge mistakes ruining your creatine results. Fix these mistakes, and creatine suddenly becomes one of the most powerful, safest, and most reliable supplements you can use. When taken the right way, it doesn't just support muscle growth. It helps improve strength, recovery, daily energy, and even mental performance. And the best part? You don't need extreme doses, complicated timing, or expensive versions to see results. You just need consistency and a little patience. Creatine isn't magic, but it works incredibly well when you stop fighting the process and let it do its job. Most people who say, creatine didn't work for me, weren't actually using it correctly. They quit too early, skipped days, underhydrated, or expected instant results. Once those issues are fixed, everything changes. Workouts feel stronger, recovery feels smoother, and everyday movement starts to feel easier and more controlled. Now, I want to hear from you. Be honest. Which mistake do you think you've been making? 
Was it not drinking enough water, quitting too soon, or worrying too much about the scale going up? Drop your answer in the comments below, because chances are, someone else is making the exact same mistake. And let me know what you want next. Should I break down creatine side effects, real ones versus myths? Or make a beginner-friendly guide on the best way to start taking creatine safely and effectively? If this helped you, hit the like button, subscribe for more simple, no BS fitness content, and I'll see you in the next video.